back to the Build Your Empire podcast where today we are joined by Kate Langford. Now, Kate has an amazing bio and Kate is a a matter of a fact coach, which I absolutely love this and I'm definitely going to be asking more questions. But Kate is a mum. She has built uh, a couple of businesses over the last few years, having a lot of success both in the coaching and the tech side. So Kate, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. That's fine. So this matter of fact, coach, I need to know, break that down. Matter of fact, look, I think a lot of people in business, there's so many people out there in this world that are saying they can do this, they can do that, and this works, and this is great. And mm. but at the end of the day, business is bloody hard. Let's just be real. Yeah. Let's, you know, it's hard. It is, it takes work, it takes blood, sweat, and tears, it takes all the learnings, it takes all the you know, messing up and, oh gosh, Mm -hmm. I could do that better next time or that didn't work, try it again. So I'm a matter of fact type business coach because I'm going to not be that fluffy. Everything's great. I'm actually going to give it to you real. I'll hold the mirror up. I'll challenge you. I will call you out on your own BS. And that's where you really get the results. If no one's going to hold that mirror up for you, that fluffy coach is probably only going to give you that oh, this is what it should be. This is what it could be. So yeah. matter of fact, business coach is really where I sit in regards to the honest, no no BS approach. Oh, I love that. I love that. I knew we connected for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, look, you know, as we kind of grow in business and as we build business, especially as women, one of the common, you know, denominators I see come up is, oh, you know, um, I, I can't, uh, one really good one that I've, I've heard recently is I can't get on a call because I'll have my kids at home. What, what, give me your take on that. Cause I know what mine is, uh, but I'd love to hear what your take is on, you know, those business boundaries within your family as well. Mm. Again, my take might not be the same as yours, but Mm. I am very much about that holistic piece. I'm very proud of being a mum and having it all. I'm actually writing a book right now on how women can have their cake and eat it too. As a wife, mum, entrepreneur, Mm. um, that's that's coming out in June. The, The final draft is just happening now. But I remember when I first started in business and I was operating at home in my home office and I had a baby in COVID. So what am I now? I've got a two-year-old, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. Yep. And I'd started when I had a three and a two-year-old um, and the third one hadn't come along yet. And my back fence has actually got notes all over it. No lie. My back fence. So I used to take a pen out the back with my phone and I would have the notes and I'd write it on my fence because I just had to get away for a minute ah. to, to handle it and I would maybe shut the the back door so the kids couldn't come out yeah. sometimes I would be in there and I would just actually let them know do you know what I this is who I am this is how I roll and yeah. they actually resonated more with the fact that I had interruption or that I had you know that mm. realization of running a business and actually doing all the things yeah. so I'm not really big on necessarily having a boundary between family and business. I mean, mm-hmm. I work three days a week now and I come into the office and I actually don't work from my home office. I don't work at night yeah. and I don't work on weekends because that's where I separate that. And I'm really yeah. big on being present in whatever I'm doing. Yeah. But at the time in the early days, yeah, that's just how it was. And if they didn't understand that or didn't resonate, guess what? There are no clients. See you later. So the back fence had a lot of scribble on it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's like the fence whiteboard. Maybe that's it a was. business. Maybe that's a business. It's like how you do business with kids while they're playing on the swings is a fence noteboard. I love that. 100%. You just got to make it work, right? You do. I think, I think also though, you know, a big thing for me was making sure that there was boundaries and understanding within my household, you know, mm. so that I had to actually teach my kids that sometimes I just need 20 minutes of silence and you're going to have to meet me where I'm at because if you want to have an amazing life and you want to do cheerleading and you want to go here and fly there and do all these things, then you're going to have to learn respect for me when I have to put that business hat on. And, you know, I think that's going to be something and, and, you know, I'm not sure if you'll agree, but, you know, it's something that's going to serve them very well as they move into life as well as they get older, realizing that it isn't all screaming and throwing toys and, you know, it isn't all fun out there. It's not. And there's going to be times that you're going to be expected to be silent, to be loud, to be, you know, all of those things and being able to be adaptable, I guess. And it's not all about you as kids. And I say that in a very nice way. But, you know, my kids are like my eldest is eight now, right? So I'm able to have those conversations. Earlier on, it was the door closed and it might have had to be an iPad if it was an important 
one yeah. and just surrender to that you know anyone who's listening to this just surrender mm-hmm. to the fact that if there's a window you need it it's okay lose yeah. the guilt lose the I shouldn't or I you know don't try and master it all do the best that you can but I have the conversations with my eight-year-old now and I say mate I've got to go down into mummy's office I've got to do this I just need 20 minutes yeah. and they go and they write me little notes at night saying I love you mum how you work so hard so they can already Aww. see that but they also get a lot of present time but they also know I'm like mate you know we can't go to Bali or we can't do those beautiful yeah. things this is this is my work and they're like oh mummy you're famous I'm like no I'm not famous <laughs> I work hard for what I do. I don't believe in luck. And I teach all my kids that. So yes, there's a lesson in that, but there's a hundred percent as they're getting older, I'm able to articulate, you know, that if we want to to do this balanced life, this is how it is. It's not all about you. And um, it's hard, but it's, it's, it's true because again, setting them up for failure and making it all about them. Guess what? They're going to find a boyfriend, friends, and they're all going to go, God, who do you think you are? Like your mummy wiped your bum? Like, yeah, no. Yeah. And and this is what I find, I guess, probably one of the, the common excuses that I find from women especially or mostly is, you know, oh, no, I can't do the course or the program or no, I can't get on a call because I have my kids at home. And I think that's just so detrimental. Yes, we need to be present. And yes, you know, they're only little for a, for a short amount of time, but also, you know, they're going into the big bad world. And like you said, if I'm present 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I'm setting them up for failure, literally setting them up for failure. So I'm so glad that you touched on that because I think it's so incredibly important that you can find that balance and and helping people understand that you, you definitely can. You know, same as you. I don't work Mondays, I work Fridays, and we 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 find this amazing balance between I've got to work and and we get to play as well. Yeah. So business for you, you know, starting four years ago now, like what was the pivotal moment for you where you went, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do this myself. Oh, that's a big question. It's a big question because I've been in recruitment, um, managing other people's recruitment businesses and agencies for 15 years. And it got to a point. um, So in my career coaching business, obviously I run Kate Langford Career Consulting and Kate Langford Business Consulting. In the career consulting business, which is where I started, uh, for me, working for the employer, I just realized it wasn't hitting the mark for me. I lost that sense of accomplishment. It didn't really matter about how much I was making. I wasn't fulfilled. So the fulfillment piece was the key. It was like, oh, do you know what? Do I really want to just get up and go to work every day and have that feeling? And that's when I was like, I want to help people with that feeling. I've got the tools and then use my transferable skills to move into career coaching. So How did I know I had to work for me? Well, I'd always butt heads with a lot of employers. Let's just be real. Um, The the managers, you know, and and when I mean butt heads, I just mean I would intimidate them in a way that wasn't really intimidating. It was just the fact that I had a voice or maybe I was like, you know, hey, um, I've got an idea. Why don't we try this one? Or, hey, you know, or I was really driven and they were jealous of the fact that I was achieving more than them. So I constantly. you You weren't a three bags full type of yes sir, no sir. We, we, we might've been split at birth, Kate. Yeah, (laughs) I know. When, when I was listening to you at the beginning of this, before we jumped on, I was like, oh, okay, this is this lady ready for me? I think we're actually, I met this woman earlier. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's a hundred percent, you know, it's that fulfillment piece and I'd, I'd butt heads and and they were some of the tell tell signs, but the biggest piece I think that everyone struggles with is, is having those balls. If I'm honest, it's the risk versus reward. So I have a big theory around, you know, every day in my life and I did it in business that I would look at it. I'd say, what's the worst case scenario? Can I handle it? If I can then do it. And that's, that's my equation to everything that I make decisions on. So when I left my job, I I had to pay a mortgage, um, which was, you know, my husband worked full time, but wasn't making enough to cover everything. So my dad actually rang me and and this is just, you know, the honest truth. My dad rang me and he said, Kate, what's it going to take for you to start your own business? I'm like, well, I'm not doing recruitment agency. And that's what everyone used to say, because that's what I did. Right. Yeah. But I knew in my heart, my gut wasn't that. And then eventually um, I was doing resume writing whilst I was having kids and dumbling and all of that. And he said, what's it going to take for you to start your own business? Now, my dad doesn't have a lot of money. We had bread filling us up on the table, you know, like he was just a great man. But I, I came from a family where I worked hard for everything. Mm. And he said, what if I, I said, I can't financially, dad, I need $500 a week to be able to just pay some bills. And he goes, well, what if I gave you $500 a week to start this? Would you, would you leave? 
And so that was the ticket of risk versus reward then, right? So I had to back myself because I knew what I could do. And I said, and I cried. And then literally two weeks later, I resigned. And then dad paid me $500, I think for was about a month, a week. And then I was paying myself and then went from garage to first staff at eight months to moving offices three times, outgrowing that, and now have a team of 15 and a seven-figure turnover. So it all starts from something like that, believing in yourself. But the big piece was fulfillment. Um, that So my why is my kids. I want to go to every sports day. I want to be at every single one of those events. Um, money's not my, my driver. It's, it's, it's my children and being able to have a holiday when I want to be able to swipe the card through coals and not stress. You know, they're the basics of why I do what I do. There it is. Not have to look at price tags was, was a big one for me. You know, and it's, it's not about just, you know, walking into Louis Vuitton and being like, whatever, I'll take that, you know, or maybe, but you know, it's more about, um, just being able to tap the card and just it like, it'll be fine. It'll go through. You That's know? all that I need. And mm-hmm. to be at every sports day and to see my kids milestone and, mm-hmm. and to get home and cook dinner every night for my family, which I do because my husband cannot cook, but he does the dishwasher <laughs> every night. So we, we need to make sure he doesn't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows that he, I'm, I'm a straight shooter wife too. So he's all good. <laughs> I love that. So look, you know, I know some of the challenges, you know, that come up in, in building, you know, six and seven figure businesses when you started to expand, what do you think you could say was one of your biggest face down moments that ended up being one of your biggest lessons? When I was growing. Mm. Um, I wanted to do it all because I had I was the only one that knew how to do it. So trust mm. and letting go and delegation are key. He, and I'm sure you would agree, but know your jam, know your genius zone, know what comes naturally, know what is easy for you to do and love it and everything else, write that list down and that's your first hire. So that's for me, I really hate writing resumes. I hate admin. I hate attention to detail. It's not my thing. Give me clients and give me talking, give me mindset and give me drive and inspiration. I'll smash it, but I'm not interested in that. So the quicker you can understand what's not your genius zone and the easier you know, the the business will fly a lot faster. And then obviously the risk versus reward. So as long as I was paying myself, which A, is critical in business, which it took me a bit to get that, but that would be Mm -hmm. another lesson. Pay yourself. Once you've paid yourself, you can pay the bills in the business um, and maybe have a tiny bit left over, then you're ready for a staff member. If you're booked out, it means you up your prices. So it's it's just yeah. basics like that. Um, but I think the delegation piece and knowing what wasn't my genius zone and what I'd sit there and get that, I've got to do that, that means it needs to go on the list. So yeah. I think the sooner you can do that, the better. And that was a big lesson. Yeah. I, I'm currently uh, listening to Who Not How. Have you read oh, that? No. One? Yes. So Dan Sullivan. I think it is who not how it's yeah. the most incredible book and i i'm an audio i'm a i'm on the run so i'm an ear, earphones in all the time girl. so yeah I, I need someone to read it to me and that again is me realizing that reading is not my zone of genius yes i can do it but i hate it because i've never read a book i've never read a book from front to back okay, unless we, I was are, at we are separated at birth because that is yeah. my story as well because for me it's the time you yeah. know, if I'm oh, yeah. sitting still for two hours and reading, like that's of no benefit to me whatsoever. But if I can be on the treadmill, going for a run, walking the dog or doing something at the same time, I feel like, you know what, we're we're killing it. We're getting more done than what we should. Efficiency, right? Everything it's, has to be efficient. I'm listening to Green Lights, Matthew McConaughey right now, and I was lying in bed listening to it last night. So yeah, it's um, yeah. I don't read that. That's I can't be doing something else at the same time. And even then, do you read the line and then read it again and then think about something else and go, <laughs> shit, I've got to read the line again. <laughs> I'll have to send you one of my uh, latest Instagram reels, and it's yeah. like my version of attempting to do yoga. Yeah. Right? And this is the thing is understanding also that to be successful, you don't have to do yoga and you don't have to put your crystals under the fucking moonlight. Yeah. And you don't like, yes, you can. Do you, you can. 
you know, but I haven't done any of those things. I've made sure that I've, you know, nourished my body. I've made sure that I've continued to grow my mind. I've made sure I've showed up every goddamn day. And, you know, now that we've created more time freedom, then I can start to slot these things in, you know. Uh, But me, my my version of attempting to do yoga is like, okay, what's on the shopping list? Okay, cool. Oh, did I change the sheets? Oh, shit. What does the dog need? Like, (laughs) Yeah, I think it's like I'm undiagnosed ADD or ADHD for sure yeah. because that's just how how I roll as well. Yeah. You know, I've got to be doing that. And everyone goes, "How do you do that?" I'm like, I don't know. I think that's our genius zone in a way too, though. Yeah, it really is. And I think also there's so much talk at the moment, and this isn't taking away from people that do need to be diagnosed, but it's there's yeah. so much talk at the moment. And everything has to have a label. No, I know. And for me, I'm like, it is what it is. I mean, even if I did have it or even yeah. you know even if I was diagnosed it doesn't matter nothing's going to change no <laughs> nothing's going to change if 100%. anything I'll go hmm now that makes sense you know yeah. what I don't if- want to calm it down I don't want to calm this mind down it's my bestie no I, this is it right it's served me very very well so one thing that I do know um you know and I'd love your take on it is you know there is this uh yeah the talk of masculine and feminine energy seems to be the new black, right? Um, and to be honest, it's, it's really shitting me of, of recent because I think it's about finding your flow, you know, and I, I don't think it's about, again, putting a title on any one of those. Sometimes we need to be in our masculine, sometimes we need to be in our feminine, you know, and it's, it's finding what works for you in the best way possible. But I think there's a lot of talk at the moment about, you know, um, hustle, hustle and if you hustle then you know you're you're not in flow and if you hustle um you know you're you're not at peace and you haven't found balance I personally don't agree I think that there's you know there's waves where you need to be in hustle you know there's times where you need to make that happen what's your take on the word hustle oh, oh, oh. Oh, here we go. I love your questions okay I'm um, gonna I've, just, I've just written down as you said it so to me hustle equals done right? So I'm a doer. Um, I get it done. If there's, you know, I come in and I get it. That's how I operate on that level. Mm. But in saying this, for example, last year I had to hustle a bit because we were down a coach and I had to do it. That's just what i got to do. So I told my family, guys, I'm going to be home. The dinners are going to be sorted. This is what's going to happen um, for the next four weeks, guys. This is what I've got to do. I've got to turn this around. I've got to hire this, 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 this. So I'm going deep in for four weeks. See you later. I actually did a live on this, actually, on my Kate Langford Business Consulting about this exact thing. It's okay to hustle. I like hustle because it gets it done. Mm. Staying in the hustle state 24-7 is dangerous. Staying in a hustle state 24-7 is actually um, on the road for burnout, if I'm mm. honest, that's that's my view. But hustle yeah. is absolutely necessary. But give yourself a time limit and say, okay, six weeks of hustle or one week of hustle yeah. or it's going to be a hustle day. Mm. Give yourself permission. Give it the timeline. When you hit that timeline, then reevaluate and say, okay, I either need a day, a cake day. So I have a cake day every Friday. Ooh, I can talk more about that if you want. But a cake day. <laughs> I think I'll where, join you. <laughs> yeah. A Kate day on a Friday is coming. I know it is. I've had to cancel the last four because this had to happen. But on that day, it's a Kate day, regardless of what's happening. I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to do the sauna, the massage, recovery room. I'm going to do those things. And then I'm going to reset and find out if the hustle's still required. So that's, I I give myself a timeline for hustle. Time, uh, successful hustle needs a timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, But hustle means getting it done. And in business, I hustled for the first year and then it eased up. But there are times for hustle. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think what's really getting to me at the moment is that you know the the common thread that I'm seeing is that people that are telling you to just slow down and you know like just it's all it's all about this, right? For anyone that's watching on YouTube, yeah. it's just yeah. all about this. And I'm like, business is not all about. It doesn't look like that. It looks somewhat like this, you know. It is. I call it business bipolar. You know, it's like yeah. It's insane sometimes. Yeah. And when you think to yourself, um, why did I sign up for this? <laughs> yeah. There's what no, am I doing? There's you know? moments of surrender, I think. So yeah. some people, when they're like, it's flow in that. Actually, there's times where you need to go, do you know what? Like this keeps happening. Something's amiss. I'm just going to step back and surrender to it and let it come and flow and then go again. So I feel like it's more surrender than like, oh, yeah, let's just all be like, I'm I'm into the woo. Like I'm about connection. I can get people. I have a third eye. I get all of that. But I don't sit in a Zen state in business all the time. Mm. Um, most of the time I'm not. But it is. But that's why I work three days a week, right? Yeah. 
That's exactly right. And I think also, you know, again, what I'm seeing is that this message, and this is why I want to touch on it, this message is often coming from people who have a gateway for a 24-7 flow state, which could be that they're in a household of two great incomes mm. or, or, you know, hubby's got a great income. So guess what? You can be in a flow state 24-7 yep. if you choose to be. But not all of us have had that. Uh, that luxury you know and we've had to stay in the hustle because you know for me I quickly ended up a single mom two little girls and I didn't want them to suffer mm. so the hustle had to happen mm. and thank god I did it because mm. we got in we got it done like you said and mm -hmm. but we got it done very quickly mm. so that we can then get into that flow state and that balance a lot faster yeah. If I had of probably listened to some of the coaches out there, you know, it would have probably, I'd, I'd still be well, well and truly um, in that state of doing right now. Uh, so I think it depends on your your um, personality. 100%. You, know, you need to be in flow for longer and you need things to take longer, then great. But understanding that, you know, uh, there's there's one person that comes to mind at the moment, which is all about, you know, if you hustle, you're in your masculine. And it's like, well, no. And then, and then saying, you know, you can't, you can't have success unless you're in your feminine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is not true. You need to find what works for you. Everybody's different. If you need to be in flow and you need a little bit of extra woo, then go for it. Yeah. Otherwise, you know what, do whatever the hell makes sense to you. And we have to stop this shaming. Yeah of people you know um depending on how they're doing it you know it's like it is what it is and and you know what some are going to be in hustle more so than others and you know some are going to be able to be a little bit more woo because they've got the backup you yeah. know they've got the extra income to cover the bills while they're in their woo you yeah know? Um, as long as you're mindful I think you know when you're getting to a point where you're tired and you're getting cranky or snappy I think it's about being really self-aware that's the key and if, if you're getting to that point where you've been in hustle for a while and that's happening like I literally just went up to Noosa by myself for two nights um, which I do once a year and I live it up and I go right and it's expensive and I get room service and I just get massage I have my facial the body scrub all of that that works for me to get me back in and then I came into work Monday and I am firing on all cylinders mm -hmm. so it's about being aware um, and I have the ability because my husband's an amazing hands-on dad too. So I have that capacity. Um, could I afford it? Yeah. Like, I mean, no, but yeah. So it's like, okay, I'll make it happen because this is necessary for me. So it's about being mindful and being self-aware of what's required in order to be in my best state, yeah. whatever state that is for you. Yeah, hundred percent. So Kate, tell me what is the book for you that was an absolute game changer? Or audio. In your case, it's going, probably going to be an audio. Could be a Netflix documentary. Um, I know for me, the first one that was a game changer was The Secret because I'd never. Oh, heard, the Secret was amazing. I'd um, never heard anything. I didn't even know what the word manifestation was. Yeah. I, I, I like Ant Middleton. Like Have you heard of Ant Middleton? No. So zero negativity. So Ant Middleton um, would be one. Um, Another one, David Goggins. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's okay. he's a bit of a legend. These are all straight shooter type, no bullshit type yeah. people. Love it. Um, again, masculine. There's not a whole lot of feminine, but you know, I work to be in a bit more feminine. It's a bit harder for me. Yeah. I want to be in there a little bit, so but because it's important, mm -hmm. and that's the self reflection piece, right? So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a rock at the front door before I walk into the house, so that I'm like because it's very easy to stay in masculine in my marriage. So I have to be very mindful of that. That takes a a lot of work for me yeah. to go hang on a second surrender let him make decisions because I'm yeah, used yeah. to that so mm -hmm. that's the space that I try to work with feminine not so much business like I'm, I'm quite comfortable with masculine in business yeah. um but yeah so, so that was zero negativity zero I'm negativity not... by Ant Middleton can't hurt me by David Goggins um and take control of your life by Mel Robbins is, is another great one David Goggins and what was the other one um and Brene Brown I mean hello Atlas oh. of the uh, Heart I mean that's just amazing mm. um what was the last one you said Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins yeah. and the other one Take Take Control of Your Life by Mel Robbins oh Mel they're all straight shooter type people and like yeah. that's that's what motivates me I don't need the soft stuff because that yeah. doesn't resonate with me um 
hundred percent. For me, that's that who, not how as well at the moment, because it's really, you know, we go into all the things and then we, we often fall into what's comfortable that we know, even as, you know, even as successful business women, it's so easy to fall into comfortable. So for me, that who, not how reminded me, like, what am I doing too much of now? Even though I've delegated, even though we've got a team, you know, what am I still doing too much of? Because, you know, massively what we're, what our focus is, um, you know, bringing awareness to this year is about, um, you know, reverse engineering that end result. Like, what's your exit strategy? You know, rather than just working and working and working and working and then all of a sudden going, oh, hang on a second, I'm 80 and I'm still working. Yeah. Like, what's that exit strategy? Yeah. So, Kate, I would love, love, love for you for you to tell uh, the listeners and the watchers where they can find you um, and how they could potentially work with you. Yeah, so I have two businesses. As I said, I've really talked a lot today about the Kate Langford Business Consulting. So if you just go to katelangford.com.au, um, both businesses are on there. But Kate Langford Business Consulting, we can have a 20-minute chat. There's a link on there as well. With the wow. Kate Langford Career Consulting, same website, just the career section. So we help people to find out what their purpose and passion is in, as a career, right through to interview, uh, sorry, resumes, applications, career confidence, LinkedIn profiles, interview wow. coaching, selling yourself, all of that so that's the career side the business side I really help you unearth what it is that you're supposed to be doing in business and actually doing it without needing a lot of savings right so a lot of people think gosh I need a lot of money to start this the answer is no so I help you to put that business concept together Um, if you're someone who's in business I help a lot of people kind of scale from one two or three people starting to scale and get that foundation really rock solid so you can scale a lot quicker Um, and then obviously the automation side I can touch on that a bit of done for you as well but we may sit in that coaching space love it well okay I'm so glad that our paths cross and this is you know you know a, such a great way to also share with people like the power of social media and the power of having the courage you know making the connections you know reaching out to somebody and being like hey you know what do you want to hang out let's you know let's collaborate let's see what we're about um so I'm really really glad that our paths cross and we will definitely be in contact again I think we need to turn it into a Kate and Mel day on a Friday yes. <laughs> sounds what, amazing yeah let's see what mischief we can get up to but yeah. definitely we will be putting all of the links to connect with Kate um in the Spotify and also in the YouTube as well so thank you so much for joining us Kate thank you for having me